Well, good morning. Welcome to Christ Church this morning. Pardon us for not quite having our internet situation sorted this morning, so you who generally watch online will be seeing this recorded and a little bit delayed. But thank you for joining us for worship here. It is a pleasure to be back. This will be my first week of starting out in the office again. Thank you. It is a pleasure to uh, be able to listen to our District Superintendent, Debbie Earthrow, offer the sermon today again. And it's a great, great pleasure to have had her support while I've been out on medical leave here. With that, as we continue our journey questioning, serving, and growing, why don't we start our worship by joining in our first hymn, number 145, Morning Has Broken, either in the blue hymnals or on the screens. be seated. I'll invite you to join me in the call to worship that's found in the bulletins and at least on the bulletins. We come together to worship, to get focused again, because God's love endures forever. We come to give thanks and God comes to save us, because God's powerful love endures forever. We come to open our hearts to receive the grace we so desperately need. And we can do this because God's gracious love endures forever. Let us worship. Are there any joys or concerns that you have to share with each other? Ken, yes. Prayers for Paul and Alice and those who continue to uh, find that they have COVID. Prayers that they recover swiftly without long-term consequences as well. Are there other joys or concerns that you have to share this morning? I'll share it's a, a joy to be getting around and being able to navigate the state well. Um, I'll also ask your prayers for those in Kentucky who suffered the devastating flooding this past weekend with more rain to come, as well as all those around the world who face food insecurity, who face war, who face abuse of all sorts as that continues in our world. Any other joys or concerns? Hearing none, I'll invite you to join me in prayer. At the end of this prayer, we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Feel free to say that however you first learned it, however is most comfortable. But let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this community that comes together despite whatever odds might have surmounted. 
Thank you for the gifts of internet and streaming that are so wonderful when they work and for the grace that surrounds us as we try to figure them out when they don't. God, continue to remind us that you show up in our lives in so many ways, whether it's seeing you through the smile of a child, whether it's being in awe of your radiance as we stand upon a hilltop or look over a valley teeming with life. God, continue to remind us that you shape us and mold us and hold us in your heart as we go through every moment of our days. God, remind us that you care for us as we are ill. Remind us that you care for us as we face disaster all around us. God, continue to look after us however we need it, as you only know. Continue to guide and keep us as we ever seek to do your will, to build your kingdom here on earth, where all people may find what they need and all people may live in safety. God, as we figure out how to do this work and how to continue to live a prayerful life aligned with you, let us pray the prayer that Christ taught the disciples, saying together, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue in worship as we read responsively these verses from the 11th chapter of the prophet Hosea. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called him, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. My people are bent on turning away from me. To the Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. But how can I give up on you, Ephraim? How can I turn you loose, Israel? I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not destroy Ephraim, for I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. The people will end up following God. The frightened children will come, and I will return them to their homes, says the Lord. Let's turn in the faith we sing to 2206 and sing together without seeing you.
I don't know if um, any of you heard this week that there was uh, something going on in the lottery. There was something called uh, Mega Millions that ended up becoming Mega Billion <laughs> or more. Uh, some of you might have seen that. Of course, uh, because we're all Methodists, we didn't do anything about it, but we, but we heard about it for sure. And um, it, even though the, uh, the last I heard at least that the jackpot was $1.28, billion dollars. If, if you took the cash payout, it was something like 747 million, only 747 million. Uh, but your chances of winning that were about one in 303 million. And yet, um, even though I don't participate in, in the lottery, I was interested at all of the conversations that started up from the media as well as maybe individuals. Maybe you had one of these conversations about what would you do if, right? What would you do if you won the lottery? What would you do with that much money? And uh, the answers that I heard others give were all the way from, you know, I would buy a car or a house. Um, uh, one, one man, apparently, I, I'd buy new tires for my old car. <laughs> Um, and then there were others that were, well, I would do this for my family, you know, and I would give this much away, and that sort of thing. They had a story about previous people that have won lotteries. There was one woman that won something like uh, $150,000. She bought, she spent the whole thing on buying $100 grocery cards and just handed them out handed them out to everybody that she could, handed out $100 grocery cards. It has been said that you can tell where your heart is by looking at your checkbook, you can tell that was a long time ago this was said, right? And your calendar. You can tell where your heart is. Jesus talked to us a lot about where our hearts are where our focus is. And uh, today's scripture reading is one of those times. We read in the Gospel of Luke um, when Jesus apparently is uh, preaching to a huge crowd that has gathered, and someone in the crowd said, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, Friend, who set me as judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? for I have no place to store my crops. He, then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. And God said to him, Fool, this very night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich for God. You're rich for God, bringing in this beautiful arrangement, aren't you? <laughs> How beautiful this is. This is real for those of you that are watching online. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Thank you. It is beautiful. And um, people have for all time been debating about how we use possessions, what it means. Um, in Old Testament times, it was believed very strongly that if you were wealthy, it was because you, had, you were a good person and God had blessed you with wealth. Well, Jesus kind of turned around our thinking on that and helped us to look at it in different ways. Um, 
I, I love the part of this where Jesus says, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. To me, that sounded kind of like the admonition we get at all times of the year when it says, now watch out for deer, right? When you're driving, watch out for deer. It's that kind of admonition because like the watching out for deer, there are certain times of the day, at least where I do a lot of driving, where um, you know that you're likely to see deer, you know, at sunrise and at sunset, at dusk and that sort of thing. But you know what? They're out all the time. <laughs> you can have deer. It, just um, ask my many vehicles that have come in contact with deer. <laughs> that deer can surprise you just like greed can. Greed can surprise you. You, you think, oh, there is not an, a bit of greed in my being, and then it surprises you. It surprises you in those times when you, um, when you click on Amazon, because you can buy with one click, you know? Do, do I really need that? It was just so easy, I just clicked on it. A thought came in my brain, and a minute later, I had ordered it, and it was coming. Um, but it's also like other things. This situation that this gentleman brought before Jesus. You know, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. How many struggles have there been over inheritance? And yet, we're given the inheritance, right? We're told that we're children of God. So we have inherited something that is not material. We've inherited the love of God. We've inherited the mercy of God. We've inherited grace. And the, the interesting part is, John Wesley put it well. He said, um, gain all you can. You probably know this by heart, right? Gain all you can, save all you can, give all you can. And I would say that I would add a couple of words in there. Oh, and by the way, John Wesley put in more than a couple words. <laughs> it's contained, you can read it in sermon number 50, uh, Use of Money. <laughs> you can read that, 15 pages of it. But I would say, gain all you can, save all you can, so that you can give all you can. And, uh, it's this idea that we are stewards. Even the things that we think we possess are not necessarily our possessions. They're things that are of God, from God, for us to be able to, <clears throat> to use for others. Um, J.H. Jowett is a, um, he was a British Protestant preacher and theologian around the turn of not this century, but the past century. And he said, the real measure of your wealth is how much we would be worth if we lost our money. I came across a story in uh, the New Interpreter's Bible, which doesn't have a ton of stories in it, but they had this story of a man who um, lost his home to one of the wildfires in California and lost everything. We've seen those pictures, haven't we? When there's been just total devastation. I mean, nothing left whatsoever. And when we had that, um, he had that happen, he said that he and his brother had been talking just the week before about whether they possessed their possessions or whether their possessions possessed them. And so when they did that, he said, so now that the fire has taken my home, I'm a free man. My possessions don't possess me anymore. And uh, it, it's a call for us to think about our lives and how we, how we live, how we interact with others, what our focus is. If you listen to that parable that Jesus told, it was I, 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 my, my, my. It was all about this man in the parable, thinking about himself and not thinking about other people, not focusing his attention on what God would want him to do in terms of sharing his wealth. And so whenever, whenever Jesus speaks to us in this way, it's always a call for us 
to take a new look at our own lives, to reassess our daily living, and those things that we need to, those, um, those bits of greed, those all kinds of things that seep into our lives sometimes, and be alert to that. Because I will tell you, and you know this, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. It is so much more gratifying to share whatever we have with others, to give what we have for others. Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for your love and care. I thank you so much for these who have gathered to hear your word in person, those who will hear this online, because we come because we want to come closer to you. We want to know you better and your ways better. Help us, because we know that you've blessed us to be a blessing. You've loved us in order for us to better love others. You have forgiven us so that we can forgive. You've given us grace so that we can share that grace. We pray all of this in the name of your loving son, Jesus. Amen. Lord, we bring these offerings this morning, gifts of our time, our talent, and our treasures, knowing that you give us the greater gift, the gift of love. May our offerings today bring hope, bring peace, bring justice, and bring your love to the others. Amen. Let's see, for announcements, I don't think I've got very much I said no worship planning, but that may be an old one. Do you going to have worship planning? Yeah. Can? Okay. You heard that, Nance? Good. Okay. The last book study is on Wednesday. If you haven't attended a book study yet, please be, feel free to join us. It's a good conversation. It's only two chapters. It's a quick read. So if you want to uh, read or just join in and hear what's going on. Um, this is a, a very interesting pastor. Um, and our local mission uh, project is looking for ideas still. Anything else? That's right. You reminded me in the chat. So that's, uh, that'll be a joint service next week. Uh, Nancy and I will not be here for the next two Sundays. I'll note that. Anything else?
anything else? And I can't say tech, is there anything? Because obviously there's not. All right, with that, our closing hymn is number 2172, We Are Called. May you be filled with God's Spirit so that you are inspired in every way to be blessed, to be a blessing, to receive love in order to love, to receive forgiveness in order to better forgive. Amen. <laughs>